Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Brewing with Jim. Good, good day, everyone. Oh, absolutely. Hi. Um, my name is Joseph Jasper. You can call me the co-host, the producer, the question asker. I am joined, as always, with Mr. Jim Brewington here in our studio. And I'm right here. It's good yeah. to be with you, Joseph. Good. Always. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's always fun to be with you. Uh, this is a show where we take audience questions. We uh, Typically, they hover around the topics of faith or life or schooling or the Bible or something like that. And we do our best to provide. And sometimes things we never expect. That's also true. That's the second segment that we'll get to. <laughs> well. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, for our at least for our main segment, which we'll jump to here in a second, um, yeah, we try to just provide wisdom and help people out. And Mostly God's wisdom. Exactly. And, and guide people ultimately towards truth and towards uh, Christ. That's our ultimate goal here. So um, we have a question today from an audience member that, Really, I, it just feels like in our wheelhouse, in our wheelhouse. And um, the question is this, uh, how do we discern between God's will and what we feel is our own desires? Uh, I imagine the situation here is there's a big decision to make in life. There's a big situation, uh, you know, two paths in the, in, in the woods kind of thing. And. Um, how do you discern what, including through prayer, et cetera, we can talk about all the details, but how do we discern when we feel an inclination between, oh, this must be God telling me to go this way versus my own psyche or, or desire or preference. My first thoughts about this were in a completely different ballpark than what you just threw to oh, me. Oh, okay. So I was not thinking about a big decision in life. I was thinking about daily decisions and oh, uh, little things that we have to do. So which way would you like for me to go? You want let's to go big start, decisions? No, no, no. Or? Let's start with what you were expecting. Let's start with daily well, routine stuff. The reason I thought, of, I don't know why I thought about that first, but I have been around people who um, look into their closet and ask the Lord what shirt they should wear that day. Sure. And uh, what's God's will here? Yeah. And uh, my answer to that one, my thought about that one is God really doesn't care sure. uh, which shirt you wear today. Just yeah. get dressed and go out and love me and, That's right. and serve me. Um, I think that in order to make a, a thoughtful distinction between, that's a discernment, I guess, between uh, God's will and my own desires is we have to know what God's will is. There and you go. in yeah. order to know what God's will is, uh, he's handily told us what his will is in his word. And so the more we know about who he is, his attributes, his desires, his commands to us, and for uh, and other thoughts about him, know him and know what he says. If he says, uh, you shall do no murder, that's pretty much expressly clear. Yeah. And w- we know what uh, we want to do there. Although yeah. there are some people that just occurred to me who will make a distinction. I'm going to kill something, and it's not murder. Sure. They redefine. What, sure. But yeah. generally, he has, uh, he has put excuse me, so many commands and so many laws and rules, especially in the Old Testament, in his that's word— right. Could somebody just summarize this? And that's what the Pharisees asked Jesus. <laughs> uh, can, can, right. you, can you boil this down a little bit yeah. so that we don't uh, have to think about every single rule? And you have to have a biblical attorney to know what that's to right. do every day. So, And uh, Jesus said, yes, I can. I can summarize yeah, this. Two things, yeah. Love God and love each other. That's right. That's it. It's called the Great Commandment. It's in Matthew. Mm-hmm. So at the end of Matthew, the great commandment is there. Uh, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. That's not the commandment. The commandment is to go into all the world and mm-hmm. teach uh, right. others, great make disciples yeah. of all people. But uh, if we know that that is the summary of his will, his intent, his, the, our purpose yeah. for which he's created us, then we can make a decision about, is my decision here my own desire, or is it loving, or is it unloving? That's right. And if it's loving, I guess we need to know what God's definition of love is. And again, he uh, 
conveniently put that in his word in many places. That's a theme that runs from um, Genesis to maps in the Bible. That's right. And you go all the way through, <laughs> and how, do you, how, do you, how does one love? Uh, more specifically, 1 Corinthians 13. Mm. Uh, these are the definitions of love. I don't want to go through all that right yeah, of now, course, but yeah. uh, if you're a listener and you can remember 1 Corinthians 13, uh, go there and take a look and spend a long, long, yeah. quiet look at what all those uh, aspects of love are. Yeah. Now, then I have to decide what are my desires. Mm. And some desires are, um, of course, legitimate. Uh, I'm hungry and I desire food. Well, that's going to be within God's will. Uh, do I have to be careful about what kind of foods I eat? If you get into that picky oon definition of all the desires, it's going to be uh, time-consuming and probably inefficient, but I'm not saying it's unworthy of thought. That's right. Uh, however, yeah, I agree with that. However, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> however, uh, should, I, uh, should I buy this house? I want mm -hmm. this house. I want a big house. Sure. I want a big house so that uh, my wife can uh, spend all day, every day cleaning. <laughs> or maybe I can have uh, <laughs> enough money. Uh, sure. So I want more money. Sure. I want, uh, yes, I want a big house. I want more money. I want uh, uh, a better car. I want a more luxurious car. Now we're getting into an area where the decisions are a little bit bigger. Sure. And uh, should I, is this loving? Mm -hmm. Well, it may not be unloving. It may be loving. It's really kind of difficult to discern these things. Sure. But it boils right down to who gets blessed if I do this? Hmm. Who, who gets to see love that the love of God if I do this? Uh, buy a big house. Am I doing it to impress other people? Mm -hmm. Am I doing it to... Uh, for my own uh, luxurating uh, around the wings of my estate here. Sure. Uh, and so I think um, that we have to make decisions uh, not solely based on is it loving, but general, just basically based on yeah. uh, is it loving to another person. And oh, that comes that. to uh, now I have to think about the other person more than I think about myself. That's right. And you're now we're on the right track. Yeah. Now I'm concerned about what do you want? What do you yes. what do you need? Yeah. What, what are you going to see in my decision that is a manifestation of my love to you? That's right. Uh, and it's is what do you think? Do you think it, it's yeah. it's often a person makes a decision and it's for themselves only? Other people will notice yeah. that. I think. I think generally, yeah, I, I think so. Um, I mean, it's natural. And I, like I said at the beginning of the episode, I, I interpret this question to come from a person who uh, is probably thinking about like a singular decision that would need okay. to be made. So if I could... A career like, move, maybe. Maybe a career move, exactly. I'm thinking of like our, our old uh, co-host and... The, the original producer of Grady with Jim Grady, uh, Grady Sanchez, yeah. Um, you know, he had the first 20 episodes or so of this show before I came on board, but um, he left CBCS and his family moved to Idaho, as we've talked about. All for good reasons. Before, for fantastic reasons. But he had to, did he have to make that decision? I guess. That's a big one. I guess he did, yeah. Yeah. I, I, not, not that. I've talked to him about this specifically, but when I hear the question for this week, my uh, my mind jumps to situations like that as to why this question would be asked. Are the, were the Sanchez family sitting and um, saying to themselves of a, a pull towards moving out of state and thinking to themselves, oh, is this God's will or is this just me? I don't know if they were or not, but I could see that being sort of the source of a question like this. There were a lot of circumstances uh, for him yeah. that opened up, Absolutely. like the provision of a home yeah. in, in Idaho. Sure. And um, Grady, if you're listening, I'm not going to reveal too much here no, because of course. that's not even yeah. the purpose of it's, why we're here. Yeah. But uh, look at many people look at did God open a door here? 
that's is there an there opportunity? It is. Yes. And if God opened the door, then it's a good idea to walk through it. However, not every door that's opened is opened by God. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we can open a door. Yeah. Sometimes somebody um, can nefariously open a door, right. and we shouldn't walk through yeah. it. So and we can be in at times in life feeling like there's twenty different doors that are open. Yes. Uh, what one do we go through? Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like uh, that's a that's its own question. I remember we talked earlier in another episode way back when about God's will yes. kind of more generally. I was just scrolling through our list of episodes. I think if you're in the audience and want to hear that conversation, I'm pretty sure it was episode number 30. <laughs> the okay. question was, how do I know that God has a plan for me personally? Yes. I remember talking about that. <laughs> I remember that episode. I remember sharing uh, a bit about my experience being a Bible teacher at a previous school teaching about God's will and how it kind of fits in these concentric circles where at the biggest level, you got to make sure that you're within what we called God's moral will, which yes. is is what you're doing literally moral. And, you know, uh, according to uh, uh, scripture's definition of what is okay or not. Stop. Make Stop sure, right there. Yeah, make sure you're there. Is there is a standard of morality that is in God's word. Absolutely. He is our standard. If someone is making a moral decision uh, and they can sense that this yeah. is a moral decision and they don't have any standard, they're going to go by their opinion, That's right. by culture, yes. by um, peer pressure, by uh, or at least peer exchange of knowledge and sure. information by... Uh, okay, go ahead. Yeah. I interrupted you, but That's I'm not... Okay. Sorry, I, I, I did. I'm happy you added yeah. that. Within that larger circle, p- picture a Venn diagram, but of just... You know, concentric concentric cir- circles. Uh, the biggest circle is God's moral will. Make sure you're in there. Yes, it's what God deems right or wrong. Yes. Uh, within that is a smaller circle that would be co- called like wisdom or just like. And what we talked about there was, um, you know, is the situation going to bankrupt you and your family? If so, then don't do that. Right? Is it just genuinely a good decision or not? Uh, or generically a a wise decision? Uh, f- you know, financially, practically, uh, right. for your health, for your time, for your finances. If it is okay for those things, then it's another green light. You know, it's another check mark. you know, so to speak. Um, so what we s- talked about then and I think applies here as well is that, look, if the decision that you're facing fits within God's moral will, if it doesn't break any commandments and right. uh, if Jesus wouldn't bat an eye at it, if, if that box can be checked, like, authentically. Which and, essentially is, is it loving? Exactly. Yes. Exa- I, yeah. And if the box of, of wisdom can be checked, of it's not going to bankrupt your family and, you know, it's not going to burn you out or whatever. If those two boxes are checked, we have discernment. We have free will. We have the ability uh, to make decisions and even potentially yes. choose from multiple open doors. We do. And maybe God opened multiple doors. Um, and that we don't have to stress over, does God want me to go through this specific thing or this specific thing? Some of those yeah. decisions can be left to us. Yeah. And they are left to us. We do have free will. Uh, does God know what we're going to choose? Yes. Yeah. Does that compel us to choose that? No. That's right. No. He can, uh, uh, if we choose one thing, of course he's going to know we would have choose it. If we choose another thing, yeah. he knows that we are going to choose the other thing. That's right. So don't confuse uh, God's foreknowledge with our free will. We still can yeah. make decisions. There are some Christians I have talked to who uh, in my opinion, and I think the Bible's opinion, confuse calling mm-hmm. with, uh, with God's will. Uh, God called oh, me to move to Iowa. Yeah. God called me to move to um, Idaho. Uh, God uh, has called people, or at least one, in the Bible to go to a particular place. Yes. That, that was Jonah. And yeah. uh, Jonah said no, and uh, then he got convinced that uh yeah okay isn't it fascinating <laughs> that uh and maybe this is just my denomination growing up maybe i may, it might be a more widespread term have you ever heard the term call as a noun referred to a pastor 
joining a new congregation. Yes. Oh, yes. I, I, is that a widespread yes. term? That's I, not yes, just one I believe it okay. is. Yeah. Yeah. But people will use, misuse the word calling, I think. Yeah. God does not call people to places. He calls people to a way. Mm-hmm. We have been gifted with certain talents. We have been uh, created with uh, uh, Holy Spirit um, gifts, yeah. and um, that's arguable how that comes about, but ultimately sure, sure. that the gifts come from God. And if we have those, then uh, we are called to behave in such a way or to serve in such a way that those gifts are uh, honed, developed, right. and are used. Yeah. Uh, and why would I use a tool that I don't have, that has not been given to me. Right. Uh, so there, I think, is the calling. But it is mm-hmm. a Christian cliche sure. to, oh, I'm called to uh, yes. to have this job. That's or Christianese. I'm called, it's, it's, yeah, but yeah. It, yes, it is. But it, and it's <laughs> Christian thinking, because Christianese will guide our thinking. Yes, it will. We think with words. We think with uh, mm. phrases. And we, um, and if the phrases true. are uh, sketchy, then the thinking is going to be weak. Sure, it's going to be sketchy too. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So I wanted to talk about the calling and yeah, uh, and, and see where we go with that one. Yeah. Um, what was else that you mentioned that uh, we need to talk about when it has to do with our will? We, we're manipulative people, mm-hmm. uh, and we our will may be. Um, um, we're hungry, and so I'm going to find food. Well, that's good. Sure. That we're made sure. to do that. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to find food in a particular restaurant. Yeah. And I'm going to go to that restaurant because yeah. I'm making this up as I go. Sure. But I'm going to go to that restaurant because I yeah. know the owner, and the owner happens <laughs> to be wealthy, and I yeah. need some money right now. And sure. maybe the opportunity will open up that I can talk to him about my financial needs. Okay, that whole string of complex thoughts yeah. is really motivated by what is it, what's in it for me? How yes. can I get this? That is true. There's, and uh, that happens, I think, sexually a lot. The, sure. I, how can I manipulate my uh, day so I can be with a person that I want to be with because of the sexual tension of being with them mm-hmm. or, or my, my fantasies or my thoughts or so, or so forth? Sure. Um, sex is a good thing. Sex uh, to manipulate other people to satisfy me is not a good thing. That's right. And that's outside of God's will. He was... Uh, kind enough to express that mm-hmm. in, in his word. Yeah. So the while the the thought process of is this God's will or is this my desire can be a little picky un detailed small uh, thoughts that would chain with other small thoughts yeah. to come to some sort of a complex decision. But overall it's uh, who gets blessed and am I thinking about myself? I love that. As we walk as as Christians, that is to say, as we go forward in life as Christians, uh, I think one of the uh, skills that we need to develop is focusing on other people more than we focus on ourselves. Mm-hmm. That's the definition of humility. Yeah. That, and I think I've said this before, but humility is not thinking... Uh, uh, less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. Yes. And so Absolutely. we uh, find ourselves habitually in, in a habit that's been developed. What uh, What's going on with you? Mm-hmm. And uh, what can I do to show love to you? Yeah. I, I almost said, what can I do to provide what you need? But that's <laughs> not my job. Sure. Uh, all our needs are provided for by Christ Jesus. Yeah. But I can, it is my job to show love to you. Yeah. And we do that by discerning what's going on in their lives. That's right. Um, In any given room full of people, a classroom, even a stadium, everybody in this room is going through something right now they wish they weren't going through. That's right. That is an absolute. I don't need to see a show of hands. I know that everyone is going through something they wish they weren't going through. Yeah. As I am walking with them in friendship or relationship or just encounter them, if I can concentrate on that and I'm concentrating on them, then I am putting forth um, – a vulnerability and openness, a willingness to be loving to them, and how I manifest that is something that's led by the Holy Spirit Himself. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. 
That's so much wisdom. Um, that that is, uh, uh, I, I guess, what I want to say is that is a good place to lead us to a conclusion. Okay. Um, to this question, I, I, I think. I think so. Um, well, th there's one other point, if you'll okay. allow me to make please, it. Please and do, that yeah. is the, the uh, thought process of, of going through this discernment mm -hmm. requires wisdom. Mm -hmm. And the wisdom is available in God's Word, but the God's, God's Word is not necessarily known to the spiritually or even mm. physically immature people. They haven't sure. had time to develop. And we're thinking about teen, I'm thinking about teenagers, sure. and we work with them every day. Yeah, we do. If they don't <laughs> have the wisdom, it's not their fault. They're still growing. That's right. Uh, if you don't have the wisdom to make a decision, then use somebody else's wisdom. Yeah. Use somebody who is, is a sage sure. around you, somebody who is sagacious yeah. around that's, you. That's, that's true for people of any age as well, it is. certainly. Yeah. The problem with the teenagers is that they don't have a wisdom, enough wisdom to know they should use somebody else's wisdom. Yeah. And, I think that just comes with being young. It does. It, yeah. It does. Yeah, it's not their fault, per se. <laughs> um, I, uh, I I think to put a button on this, yes. um, again, the original question, how do you <laughs> discern between God's will and your own desires? Yes. I think if a person is um, well attuned to Christ himself yes. and is following Jesus with their lives, if they're spending time in prayer or in scripture— they won't need to discern between God's will and their own desires because there will be just such a tremendous overlap between the two. Uh, that's mm -hmm. not to say that decisions and choices in life won't uh, come naturally uh, or w will come. It's not to say that they will come naturally. We still have decisions to make and discernments to make. Yes. But the discernment will not be between does God want this or not? Because you'll know, it, it'll be intuitive to you. That is, yes, that yeah. is part of being in Christ. Yeah. Being in Christ, think of the preposition and being in a room yeah. or being in another person. Uh, that doesn't really happen right. to us, but we can be in Christ. That is a um, phrase that is used uh, throughout the Bible, but yeah. most uh, densely. Uh, peppered in the book of Ephesians. Sure. If we are in him, then we have that wisdom. We have uh, that close relationship with him Yeah. that he will help us, That's right. especially if we uh, desire to do what his will is. We don't have to strive and scrape. I'm not saying we don't put forth effort. We do yes. have to put forth effort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we uh, do not have to depend upon ourselves to accomplish right. the task. Yeah. So the funny thing is the way I'm thinking about this question now is how do you discern between God's will and your own desires? It's almost not worth trying to answer that. Like if you're listening with that question on your heart, it almost isn't worth the effort to develop a bunch of structures and mechanics and ways of living to answer this question specifically. The real wisdom is to say, put this question aside and develop your relationship with Jesus. <laughs> and then the answer to this question will dissolve or will go away or will be addressed with that pursuit. Yes. So pursue Jesus. Yes. That's the wisdom of this that, that comes out of getting this question. That, that may uh, not, though, uh, remove all confusion about what is God's will and what isn't. And then it's time to uh, be with somebody who yeah. will help you, who knows Jesus, who is in Christ, Absolutely. who is familiar with his word and, and, and can help you yeah. with those decisions. Yeah. I am huge, you know, uh, on mentoring. Yeah. Um, I, I think that the church is uh, relatively weak in discipleship, but mentoring is the way to go. I actually developed a whole program sure. on that. Yeah. So be with somebody who is wise. Okay, we've talked. This too is much. great. Yeah. yeah, that's a that's a great uh, way to conclude that. Uh, let's bounce to our second segment. This is a question that Jim does not know ahead of time, and it's usually something pretty silly. So Jim, here it is for today. Here we go. Are you excited? 
Uh, excitement is not the right word, <laughs> but I'm pumped. I just love. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh-huh. I just love poking the bear with this kind of stuff. You Here know? we go. All right. What is the most unusual talent or skill that you have that most people don't know about? Oh whoa. <laughs> um, I don't know. I. I. I um, I don't like you right now. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes I ask these questions. I don't. A skill that I have that other people don't know. Yeah. Like an unusual talent. Uh, I think I have uh, an ability. Well, one skill I have. Three just came to mind. Wow. Oh, there we go. Uh, One skill I have is is, uh, understanding uh languages a mm-hmm. little bit um i'm a grammar nerd sure and uh syntax and i don't uh correct other people's grammar uh although debbie my wife will disagree with that but <laughs> um because i will sit in a recliner and correct the grammar of a, a television broadcaster sure who makes uh, a living using english and i would think they would know better <laughs> and probably a teleprompter better. but i can help <laughs> i can help people who want to be helped to become more clear sure. in their language because i understand uh, the possessive case precedes gerunds, and most people have no idea what that means. Sure. But if you learn what that means and you can use that, the clarity of your of conveying one thought from your mind to another. Yes. Okay, there's that. You and let me interrupt here. Okay. Because not just in terms of grammar syntax, but even in tone or. Um, uh, uh, like intentionality itself, you have done that for me. Like you have helped oh me. My. Like you have told me in the past. Like Joseph, cut to the chase. You know, uh, it, like interpersonally, off off the microphone, uh, prepping the show or something like that. You've said just like Joseph, spit it out. You're you're you know you're saying too many words without saying anything. You know. Oh well, that because yeah. that's because <laughs> of. I don't want you to change. It's not my job oh, to change I know that. you. I, I know that. You you do that because you're more polite than I am. Yes. And you use softer language. You that's a skill you have that sure. I oftentimes do not have. <laughs> and I am just straightforward and blunt and yeah. I do better when people are uh yeah. straightforward and blunt yeah. with me rather than uh, like, can you land this plane and exactly. can we just get down to it exactly uh okay whereas, that, for, whereas for me that can feel rude and i don't want to oh, it probably feel is rude. rude oh i'm i'm sure it is rude. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that's so funny anyway continue well i don't know how to continue i don't know what other skills uh that i have that other people don't know about sure um i my prayer life is mm. um it is my prayer life, and I don't know what other people's personal prayer life. I understand the public utterance of prayer. Yes, um, I can do that. We can all <laughs> pretty much do yeah. that. But my prayer life is—I uh, wouldn't call it a skill—but I chat with uh, my Lord uh, pretty much throughout the day. Yeah, and it, I pray most of the time with my eyes open, mm-hmm. and it helps when you're driving and, <laughs> and pray. <right>. Yes, <laughs> and I. Uh, <laughs> I have prayed with other people with my eyes open and their eyes open. Uh, I remember one time in a cubicle at, uh, at, at a workplace, I was praying with eyes open, mm-hmm. and uh, somebody else came up and just said, can I join your conversation? Oh, wow. <laughs> and I said, sure, uh, come on in. Uh, I, a lot of that, I learned that by uh, praying with deaf people. Because mm-hmm. you, you close your eyes, you can't see what's being said. That's right. Yeah. And yeah. we don't hold hands either uh, mm-hmm. because then you can't say anything. That's right. So uh, there is, yeah. I don't know that that's a skill, but I, have, I am still working on um, Christianese walking with Christ, ah, yes. walking with Jesus. Yeah. Now, I, walking with Jesus, you know, where are you guys going? Well, I, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, the Christianese of it, yeah. I uh, I sometimes picture him, uh, and I have to picture because yeah. he's not right here uh, physically. But I picture him as the omnipotent, magnificent creator and potentate of the universe, holding the planets in order yeah. and uh, holding all things together. And right. also, uh, he's my friend, and 
he wears jeans and walks with me and <laughs> sure. um, and we just chat mm -hmm. like I would with any other friend yeah I think that's an important aspect that's a talent I'm not sure other people would know sure. about that sure it, it's sort that of makes sense within me that yeah this is how I come on let's go yeah uh, what, what do you want to do let's go yeah. somewhere and do something yeah. I appreciate that because it it talks or it speaks to the approachability of Christ. Oh yes, and I think that um, I think that oftentimes you know we we and rightly so we get lost in the magnificence, we get lost in the power and the authority and the and, 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 as all, we and all of those are true, as very we should. very true. Yes, um, but we can't forget the approachability exactly and the 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 level of familiarity that Christ wants with us personally. Um, that's. That's what makes him special. I mean, it, everything makes him special, but that's a really special aspect of him. Um, I love that. As soon as we get off the air, uh, I'll probably think of more things that I should yeah, have course. said. Of course, but yeah. I that you that's great blindsided me with. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what that's, that's the point. That's yeah. the point. Uh, let's go ahead and call it there then. Um, okay. Thank you for listening, friends. Yes. Uh, we're so thankful uh, every week, any week that you tune in. Uh, we want to invite you to reach out to us. We have an email address that is brewingwithjim at gmail.com. Yes. Um, please uh, reach out to us. Let us know uh, where you're listening from, a little bit about yourselves. Uh, you can also, of course, submit questions to the show that Jim and I will then go ahead and discuss, like we just discussed this question today. Yes. Um, again, if you do that, yeah. it helps us. It does. We have no idea who's listening. Yeah, oftentimes. And, well, yeah. occasionally. We, well, yeah. we do with the feedback. Yes. Uh, and we get to know you a little bit, but it would help me mm -hmm. if I have uh, some relationship with you. Yeah. And uh, so you need to reach out and yeah. help me do that. Absolutely. Okay. Again, that email address is brewingwithjim at gmail.com. With that, that's another episode. It's a wrap. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you next week. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. The topics that are covered and the answers that are offered during episodes of Brewing with Jim are designed to mine the wisdom attained from a life of pastoral ministry and care. They do not constitute professional or clinical training or expertise in the areas of counseling or mental health. CBCS and its podcast network want to provide a platform for the discipleship of our community. Brewing with Jim is our attempt to foster that environment in a format that is accessible for everyone to participate in. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed during the show are the speaker's own, and they may or may not represent the views, thoughts, or opinions of Capistrano Valley Christian Schools or its faculty. The material and information presented here is for general information purposes only. This episode has been a production of the Capistrano Valley Christian Schools Podcast Network. Capistrano Valley Christian Schools is a Christian JK-12 school in San Juan Capistrano, California. Be sure to check out, subscribe to, and leave a review of this show and the other shows on our network on your podcast player of choice. Doing so supports the school community in a multitude of ways. For more information about the CVCS Podcast Network or any of our other shows, check out cvcs.org or email podcasts at cvcs.org. On behalf of the whole network, this is Mr. Jasper saying thank you again for listening and stay tuned for more.